So they are escaping the crime scene. Welcome back to Off the Tactical. So today we're going to be reviewing and testing this laser rangefinder. It's a go, go, go uh, laser uh, rangefinder. Uh, it's a Chinese rangefinder. You can pick it up for about 80 to 100 bucks on Amazon if they're still available. Also, we want to test it for accuracy uh, to see how close we get. First, we're going to go ahead and do a quick unboxing of it. Then we'll come back here to the field and take a look. Let's go ahead and unbox it. So let's go ahead and try to see what is in the box here. Um, it's a very colorful packaging. Looks like it's got a hard carrying case. Uh, some Chinglish instructions. Cleaning cloth. Um, instructions are probably not very much good. But I'll look at them to see what the modes do. This case, uh, the case seems nice. Um, it's got a belt buckle here, and you can unzip it, and then you can use your little rubber band or your uh, elastic cord to keep it shut so that you can quickly open it and get to your range finder. All right, guys, I'm going to measure across the field here, which is pretty close to being level. Uh, we slope downhill a little bit, uh, but we're going to try to keep it level, uh, move over there along the contour, and uh, to maintain accuracy, we're going to be testing over to this paper here, so nice reflective target, good conditions for it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and use a 100-foot tape, and we're going to measure out to uh, you know, uh, 30 yards, 60 yards, and uh, 100 yards, and we'll see how it picks it up each time. Then we'll move out further and try against some different obstacles. All right, let's go ahead and start measuring. Inches, of course, not metric. So I'm not really sure to what to expect here. I've just, you know, zero shot this thing uh, at, what I've, at specified ranges I've had. It has appeared to perform, uh, but I'm a little skeptical about its uh, accuracy at looking at targets. So that's what we're going to find out here. Uh, I think it's going to measure a little bit too uh, large of a distance, but let's find out. 90 feet. There we go, folks. All right, so there we are. We're nice close, 30 yards. Let's hit this. Let's hit this paper and see what it does. So we want mode one. So cycle to mode one. And let's go ahead and see what it says. All right, it's saying 30 yards, um, 30, 29.9, 30 yards. Okay, that's really good, guys. That's like perfect. Okay, guys, so that was, uh, I was impressed there. 30 yards exactly, 29.9, uh, 30. One irritating thing with this uh, range finder is that it takes things to the tenth of a yard, and it has a precision of, uh, or an accuracy of plus or minus one yard. So taking the precision down to uh, one tenth of a yard is a little overdoing it. It should just give you even yards since it doesn't measure that closely uh, according to the manufacturer. But in this case, it gave us 30 even um, to 29.9. So it looks really good. And, we're gonna... and our accuracy, of course, when it comes to measuring, uh, is going to have some variations in it just because when we remove the tape up, it might have like a foot of error. Uh, so if I'm within a couple yards, uh, that is going to be really, really good. All right, there we go, another 100 feet. So to use this, uh, the power button, you just press it briefly, and it turns the scope on, uh, whatever mode you had it set on last, mode one, uh, and you push and hold the power button, and it does your uh, zero re rearranging. So we're gonna go ahead and move it over to our white uh, paper. Once again, perfect 60 yards, guys. That looks really good. Okay, let's go ahead and move out to 100 and see how it performs. By the way, it does automatically uh, turn off after 20 seconds, so you don't have to, there we go, just like that. Automatically turns off, so you don't have to worry about turning it back off again. And so basically it's always on, uh, and then you just activate it by pressing that power button there, and then you can cycle through the modes with this one. So I don't know how long the little, uh, it's like a half a AAA, uh, or half a AA lithium battery. I'll get you the number. Um, I'm not sure how long that will last uh, in the scope. It has this nice uh, case. I do like the case. Uh, it has a little uh, uh, piece of elastic that holds it so it doesn't, you don't lose your uh, range finder when you open it up. And you can still get to it easily. And there we are at 100 yards. We're going to go ahead and push our power button to activate. And let's go ahead and take this range. 90. Okay, guys, it's like really good, 99.7. Uh, and if I move back just a little bit, um, it's not giving me it's 100. Yeah, look how fine that is. That's really good. Okay, so so far at 100 yards, guys, we're getting perfect performance against paper. 
Okay, so while we're here at the 100 yards, we'll take the opportunity to test it against some other surfaces. So it works great against white paper. Obviously, that reflects very nicely. I'm going to go ahead and send my assistant up there. Um, and he's wearing just a black... Um, actually, he's wearing a black hoodie right now. Uh, so it should be very non-reflective material. And he's going to stand up there right next to the target. And I'm going to... Uh, see his distance using the rangefinder, and we're going to see how it uh, picks him up or if it just sees the ground behind him uh, while I'm shaking him out. All right. It's working, guys. All right, it works. And if I move off, you see the distance goes up because of the trees in the background. 101, 102, um, but it picks him up at 100. All right now, right now I want to show you another mode it's got. It's got it's called golfing mode. So I'm gonna press the mode button, go to mode two, and it has angle correction, some other stuff which I'm not sure about. But on a flat level, it should give us the actual distance. Uh, and what this does is I, as I move my reticle around like this, it'll give us the closest. Uh, excuse the wind there, but it'll give us the closest distance it sees. So I'm gonna hold it down, and 99.4. That's the closest distance it saw. And you can see like if I do it again over here. 100 points, 100 uh, point three, it's still picking him up. So this mode is useful uh, for doing that, uh, for picking up small targets that have a further way background. Uh, especially if you're shaking around and it's hard to pick him up. Let's move out further and see how it does. Here we are guys, on the edge of our active volcano here. And we are at 200 yards. So our target is way down there. And we are going to go ahead and sight it. Fire him up. 199.4 198 okay look guys it looks really good really really good okay so it's working it's working really well all right so i was shaking a little bit there uh try to hold the camera and the device so that might not be very easy to read but i went ahead and i shot it uh without the camera and i'm getting anywhere from 197 and a half to 200 and a half yards um so about four yards, three yards of variation, I would say. Uh, probably about three yards of variation, what it looks like. And uh, it's not picking up a target right away. I mean, I push the button, it gives me a number, but it's not quite so positive as it is at 100 yards. Um, so you have to make sure you're on the target um, and not on something to the side, and it gives you a further distance. So at 200 yards, um, we're still getting really good uh, measurements. I mean, that is more than enough for uh, any shooting I'll ever be doing. But let's go out to 300 yards and see how it does there. And then we'll do some longer range shots uh, to some targets. I can see their distance on a map. 300 yards, folks. All right, let's try to get this thing on the target. It takes a few seconds. Okay, so let's see. There's a target. 298. No, 296, not bad. 294, right, it lost target, and, okay, 299, so it's coming up very accurately, though it takes a second for it to respond, 288 that time. So it's measuring uh, really good, it's measuring very close to 300, it is a bit tricky to get the reticle on the target and not into the grass below the target, you know, 10, 15 yards closer to us, which I believe is what's happening, and it takes about, you know, half to one and a half uh, maybe a couple seconds for it to pick the target up. It's not instant. It, it has to ping it a few times before it gets a, a good response. Um, and that is at 300 yards. All right, so it works against the paper and against the trees at 300 yards, uh, even against grass. It seems to work nicely. Uh, down, down here, uh, we're looking at a corner. I mean, it cannot be more than uh, 500 yards away. I would say it's less than that, probably around 400. Um, and this entire field over here, which is grass uh, sloping uphill gently, at an angle to us, it will not pick up anything over there uh, as far as looking at the grass that the ground goes. So it has trouble picking up um, the ground and giving you a good reading. So you really need an object to uh, look at. And the fence posts, for an example, like the corner there, won't pick those up either. All right, so I got another hill up here at about a, a little bit over 300 yards, I would say. And uh, it has some broom sedge on it, which is more shiny. Uh, and upright should be more reflective than the rest of the grass. And I'm getting uh, some luck getting the range to that uh, grass. All right, let's see. Push briefly, 264. Not didn't pick it up. 309. 321. 
Nope, we're gonna pick it up. See if I pick the tree up. Yeah, 338 to the tree, next to the tree. 329. Alright, so it's working sometime right here. So I think that these numbers we're getting when it does work, I think they're accurate. Uh, simply because it's measuring the time of the light going out. And if it's accurate at 300 yards, it's going to be accurate at any other distance above that. Since the light, the speed of the light uh, through the air here is not changing at all. Uh, and it has an accurate, uh, probably a crystal timer in it. It's not going to be uh, changing its accuracy. But what is going to be changing is whether it can pick up targets or not. And that's the big problem. Not enough light is getting back from the targets too scattered to pick it up. So at 300 yards, it works nicely. Beyond 300 yards, we start having problems uh, picking up targets. Uh, like the ground or trees or things. So it looks to me like your effective range is going to be closer to um, Depending on what you're looking at three to four hundred yards and Unfortunately, that's probably uh, closer. I mean up to 300 yards. You really don't need a range finder It's so beyond that you got to start thinking about holdovers um, So that's something to think about and I'm gonna go ahead and do some shooting try to get find some more reflective targets at 500 plus yards and uh Sight them along the uh, with the range finder, see what their distance is, and see if it works as advertised out to 600 yards. We're gonna go ahead and try to take a shot at that house over there. I would say that's at 500, it's definitely less than 600 yards. Uh, we'll take a look at a map and we'll verify that. I'll show that right here, uh, its actual distance, and uh, we'll go ahead and take a shot at that. All right, All right it picked it up. It's a white house and it is. 443 yards. So I picked it up. There is a delay there. Uh, it's pointed at the house. All right, did not pick it up that time. 440 that time. Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm briefly pressing the power button and it sends its laser out for a few seconds. It sees if it can pick it up. You can also push and hold the power button and it'll continuously ping until it picks it up. But I'm gonna... All right, so what's happening when I'm trying to shoot the propane tank, which has on the uh, uh, show them the crest of the hill here, you can see there's those uh, weeds sticking up. And they're small, but there's enough of them there to reflect light back, so it's giving me 190 yards. So even though I can see the propane tank fine, there's a few wispy little uh, uh, weeds coming up in the way there, and it's giving me 200 yards. So I can't pick it up. You have to have an unobstructed view to your target. If you have a little branch in the way, it'll pick the branch up. Uh, so it would it be nice, it has this golfing mode on it where it gives you the nearest target uh, in a background. It would be nice to have a mode where it gives you the furthest thing you can see in that range. That would be a really neat, neat feature on it because uh, right now if I'm looking at a target it's hard to, uh, to pick it up if there's any obstructions. Right. Well, we have up here on the hill and it's definitely obscured by some trees and it is at a distance of maybe a hundred, uh, you can see both of them here. I mean 150 yards, so it's going to be near It's going to be near 600 yards, but I think closer than it. But it's a darker non-reflective color, I'm not sure if it'll pick it up or not. Let's see. Let's go ahead and try uh, this place up here. 152, okay, it's, it's picking up the trees and branches. Let's, I'm going to move up and try to get so the trees and branches are not obscuring my path uh, of the laser. And we're going to try that again. Alright, there it is, not obscured. And we will go ahead. Turn it on. Let's try, let's try that white roof right there. White door. No, it will not pick up the house. Um, its practical range is it's going to be limited to about to about 400 yards. All right, so this rangefinder, um, go 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 laser rangefinder, uh, eighty two hundred bucks on Amazon. It's good on many targets, grass, trees, uh, you know, dark surfaces. Looks like out to about three hundred yards. It's really good accuracy, uh, you know, plus or minus just a few yards, which is uh, plenty good. The precision is a little irritating. It takes it to a uh, full decimal place, so one tenth of a yard, it's three inches, and it's nowhere near, of course, that accurate. Uh, and that's just not practical, so I wish it gave just single digits. That's not really that big of a problem. But at about 400 yards, uh, you're going to start you're losing uh, performance. And you need a nice, bright surface to look at. And you can't have any trees in the back, you know, in the, in the foreground or anything obstructing the target. Because that laser beam begins to get big at that point. I don't really know what the angle of it is. Uh, but it starts diffracting off the trees and does not give you either an accurate measurement or no measurement at all. So you're looking at about a 400 yard a practical range, unless you're looking at something really shiny. Uh, that's going to reflect the light back properly.
Okay, so after all that test, um, it appears to be more of a uh, sports or golfing range finder. The range is really not far enough, it isn't, to do any uh, long range shooting, simply because 300 or 400 yards, that is your point blank range where you don't need to do any holdovers uh, with modern uh, battle rifles. So. If you're going to be planning on doing uh, golfing or you like to do javelin throwing, this is a range finder for you. Or uh, else, uh, it might help you uh, to zero your rifles. Uh, but other than that, you probably want to find a longer range solution. Uh, so that's it. Uh, so it's advertised at 600 yard, uh, 600 yards for non-reflective, 900 yards for for, for, uh, for reflective targets, I believe. 600 slash 900. Um, but I would say 400 yards is going to be a safer number to go with. And uh, if you want. Total reliability only goes up to about 300 yards. So I don't know if that'll work for you. Uh, generally speaking, if you are going to be using a rangefinder, uh, out to 300 yards, or most uh, cartridges are pretty level shooting. Uh, but that's all for today, and we will see you again uh, next week. Thanks for watching.